husband, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, old friend of the website. Now he's got a bigger gig in the White House as a top advisor to the President of the United States, mostly on national security issues. Now, Dr. G, let's talk about North Korea. So so you and I, as colleagues at Breitbart News, I feel like we would, we would go through this every six or eight months, where this is the time where really now Kim Jong-un has gone off the rails and we're going to have to deal with him. Why is this different, this news cycle? Yeah, we, we did uh, have a kind of Groundhog Day uh, with regularity with regards to Pyongyang, but, but things have changed. Things have changed uh, fundamentally in a geostrategic environment because America is back and because you have the, the master of the art of the deal as the commander-in-chief. If you just look at the statements coming out of Beijing, if you look at the decision with regards to uh, purchasing U.S. coal over Korean coal, things have fundamentally changed. North Korea is uh, probably the most Stalinist state that has ever existed, probably more Stalinist than, than Joseph Stalin's Soviet Union. And as such, it's simply economically unviable. Uh, as a result, it has been propped up by China for decades. Uh, but at this point, uh, after our recent decisions uh, to act in Afghanistan, in Syria, um, the, the regime in China is starting to reassess just how much it is in its national interest to maintain that client state in North Korea. So that, that's why this isn't just, you know, the same old, same old news, Alex. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like it. And it just is one of these things which has been a great challenge for me that I've actually really enjoyed thinking through over the last couple of weeks, which is that I don't want the president to have an interventionist foreign policy. I don't want to create a situation like we created uh, with the Iraq war where we're having troops come home with, with PTSD and they're losing limbs and we don't really know what ground we gained from it. Um, and, you know, the ISIS filled a lot of the void that was left by President Obama in many cases. And, and I don't want that to be President Trump's foreign policy. But we are seeing a world where there are so many bad actors out there, Dr. G. They're so emboldened. And we have these globalists throughout uh, the Western world who enable them at every step of the way. And having a muscular United States, it, 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 it is something that could be beneficial at this particular moment. Your thoughts? Wow, I never thought I'd hear you say that. Um, yeah, so let's, let's be a little bit um, more sophisticated than the general national security debate. That's, that's one of the reasons uh, I came on board with Breitbart all those years ago, because the national security debate in D.C. and, and in, in, in general was just sophomoric. It was uh, either you've got to be a neoconservative and invade other people's countries, or you've got to be Ron Paul and you've got to... Uh, be an isolationist. Exactly. Well, well, the world's a little bit more. The world's a little bit more complicated than that. So again, um, this president is not an interventionist, but he understands that without leadership, without America showing uh, the way the system should work, then we have anarchy and we have bad actors exploiting the vacuums created. So no, nothing's changed about Donald J. Trump. He's not different since, you know, before the election as opposed to being the president. But the fact is, without leadership in the world, uh, you have the chaos that we inherited after the last eight years. Well, if and I don't know uh, how often you get a chance to listen to the show, but I said right after the strike on Syria, Dr. G, that I was very skeptical of it because it was a proactive uh, in, in engagement. But I did say that if the president could resist, keep this to a one and done, not make this a prolonged mm -hmm. thing. Uh, then it, it could potentially be very good. It sends a signal that our red lines matter, that there's a new sheriff in town. And so far, fingers crossed, that's exactly what's happened, is it was a one and done. It did send a clear signal that America is not to be trifled with, and he's not keeping us there, which is a very strong move. Uh, yes, and, and one, one more thing about, about that strike and even about the, the Moab hit in Afghanistan. Um, it needs to be understood not simply in terms of what we did physically on that day. It's not just about the 59 cruise missiles or that 21,000-pound bomb. It's about the philosophy that statecraft, running the ship of state, can never be done purely based upon diplomacy and just words. If you're not prepared to back it up with force, that doesn't mean invading other people's countries, but using force where necessary, then all it is is just pieces of paper. So you know, the president understands that 
all the levers of national power must be used together if we are to secure America and the interests of American citizens. So, so it is, it's, it's much more than about that event. It's about understanding what it takes to be America again. Now, Dr. G, uh, I want to go through a few issues, a little rapid fire with you, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Secretary of State yep. Tillerson said that Iran's complying with the nuclear deal. Uh, they're still sponsoring terrorism, so they're not happy with the Iranian state, but they say that they're honoring components of the horrible deal Barack Obama struck. Is this an indication that you guys are not going to look to undo that deal and come up with a better one? Uh, no, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, right now, it means simply that there are certain aspects of the deal that are being held to, uh, but the deal itself and all U.S.-Iran policy is being reviewed right now. So don't, don't read too much into that uh, because everything is uh, on the table in terms of reviewing the JCPOA. Okay, next up is the first protected dreamers expected to be deported. I know President Trump personally has pledged that these guys are not going to be a priority. Uh, I still think it's very important for the sake of law and order, for the sake of national security, uh, that we send a signal, you're not free to come here. And uh, look, the, the dreamers are, are victims in many cases because they didn't choose to come here. They were brought here by their parents. But you can't have any magnets as far as I'm concerned, to bring people across the border illegally. Your thoughts? Uh, I think you just have to look at what happened yesterday. I mean, uh, A, we have the incredibly clear language coming out of the Attorney General's uh, office himself, but listen to what General Kelly said as well. We have laws on the books. It is not un-American, it is not divisive to actually implement those laws and make them real. If, if somebody doesn't like that, we have a republic, we have a democratic republic, those laws need to be changed if you can change them. But right now they're going to be implemented, and that, <coughs> that applies to, to anybody who's an illegal alien. Dr. Sebastian Gorka is my guest. He's an advisor to the president out of the White House. Dr. G, uh, next up I wanted to ask you about Turkey. Uh, what's the situation over there? Erdogan uh, is going to meet with Trump later on this month. What are they going to talk about? Uh, I'm sorry, next month. I think they're going to talk about all the obvious questions that are of uh, common concern to both countries. Uh, that's going to be Syria, that's going to be terrorism, and that's going to be the Kurdish question. No simple answer to any of those, but remember, if you just look at the history of the 20th century, Turkey is a geostrategically important nation. Uh, geography is destiny. Look at the size of the country. Look at where it is. So that meeting is an important meeting. The last question for you today, Dr. G. There was a, what appears to be another jihad attack in California. Uh, a man screaming Allahu Akbar uh, shot and killed three people. We also uh, have a, a breaking story on uh, domestic terror that I'll get to after the break. But it's a, your thoughts on the threat on the United States on our homeland by either homegrown jihadis or immigrants who came in. Uh, I just look at the fact, since the caliphate was declared by Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in 2014, we have arrested more than 130 people linked to ISIS in America, 30 plots. Uh, this is not a joke. There is no front line in this war. The front line is when you leave your house in the morning. Uh, fortunately, uh, this threat has been allowed to expand. We're going to take it seriously, and we're going to knock it on the head. Important reminders, Dr. Sebastian Gorka from the White House. Catch up with you soon, sir. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Breitbart News Daily.